those godly values in the life of your children. You will see different characters in children now that is so alarming. In my own time, I used to feel like, oh, these things were like, ah, oh, but now you will see things that are, ah, and you're like, oh, so I didn't even sense in my own time. back to my YouTube channel if this is your first time here you came at the right time like please do well to subscribe watch my videos most importantly subscribe at the end of the video give a thumbs up to the video of course most importantly share my videos let this video go viral okay so some of the lessons I learned from this movie is the fact that we shouldn't allow offenses to get the better part of us like try to repair your heart by going to revenge route and now you also want to show him that yes you can also do better do better like quote and unquote you get my spouse cheats on me and i also go out to cheat on him i mean two wrongs don't make it right <clears throat> guys marriage is work i repeat parenting is extra work so you cannot go through this journey without god you need god to help you work it out <laughs> no matter how much people tell you about their experiences in marriage and all that, it still cannot count for what you would experience in your own marriage. Every, every marriage has its own manual, but God is the central point. Okay? God has to teach you how to raise your kids. God needs to be there to teach you how to forgive your spouse when he or she hears. You know, God has to teach you on how to run your home, how to shoulder the responsibilities involved in marriage and all that. And now that leads me to the other extension of this point that says that we must give a place to family altar in our marriage. As Christians, I don't know how busy I'm ever going to get in life. Like the place of family altar must never be negotiated. Don't even try it. Don't you say, oh, I'm so busy. Or, there is never a convenient time. Hmm. I used, I used to deceive myself back in the days that, oh, when I'm really free, I will read my Bible. When I'm really free, I'll do this, I'll do that. There will never be a very convenient time for you. Believe me, at the time when you think that your time is convenient for you to do those things, something, something will come up and you will not be able to do it. So in the midst of your inconvenient time, create time for God. The place of family altar cannot be negotiated. See, don't even joke with it. From day one, that baby in your room, do family altar, pray with your spouse. The baby listens. When you have your child, is a day year old child, is a one year old baby, whatever, they must be there. Ta 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 ta. The Bible says, a little year, a little day. That's how you are saved. That leads me to the next point that says, that teach your kids godly values. My dear, I am a teacher. I have seen things in this life. I am not yet a mother and I'm not yet a parent, anyways, but I have seen things in this profession that. We are in a time and age where the devil is really serious about attacking children. I mean, do I say children now? Young adults. Like, he's really, really on the verge of making sure that these children are polluted. If they're not polluted at home, they are, not, they are polluted by the environment. If they're not polluted by the environment, they are polluted by their peer influence. You know, relationships they build in school. You cannot afford to leave your child empty. You must put values, godly values in your children's minds. And how do you do this? See, they need God as well. That is the, the same point that we're talking about. Yes, they need God. You need to teach your children godly values and don't assume their salvation. Don't say, oh, because yes, my child was born into a Christian family. Of course, I was born into a Christian family as well. But you go to a stage in my life, oh God, I knew that, yes, this is not about my dad being a Christian or my mom being a Christian. I knew that I needed God. When you come to the position in life, or situations in life, you look as if you are at the bottom, let's fit. Then you will know that you need God, but you don't need to wait to that time. The Bible says that our children will be taught by the Lord. But you as a parent, you have the responsibility to train up your child in the way that it should go. Things are happening now that you cannot afford to leave your child empty. And don't assume that your child is saved as a Christian family. You must minister salvation to your children. Now, the age that you're going to start depends on you. But once you know that, yes, your child already understands a right hand from my left hand, his right hand from his left hand, it is time to minister salvation to them. You cannot afford to leave this children empty. Now, something that strikes me most in this movie is the fact that there was a young child, the youngest child in that family was actually the one that God used to save the family from total destruction. Like, God used that child. That this child was not free from, from attack, so from the devil. This child was not free from attack because at a point, the child was almost sexually molested by an adult. The adult in question happened to be a relative in the family. You can imagine. 
things that instill godly values in your children. Tell them these are the things that are right, these are the things that are wrong. The Holy Spirit is there to teach them because it is not about you just knowing what is right from wrong. Sometimes it's, it's beyond our willpower. Sometimes you find yourself doing things that ordinarily you wouldn't have done them or you would not want to do them, but circumstances will just happen and you find yourself doing those things. But when you know that, oh, that God loves you, regardless of your mess, regardless of whatever things you are doing, you will not go deeper and deeper into that your children be confident to talk to you hmm. don't tell yourself to mother disciplinarian to the extent that your children cannot come or walk up to you rather with their issues to be able to talk to them now in this movie the mother in question said to the children that oh when you people have issues open up or oh, talk to me or oh, i'm your mother or oh, hey don't hide things from me if you hide things from me i might not be able to help you at the point where a eldest child was about to make a very bloody mistake this girl reached out to the mother but did you know what the mother's reaction was at that point there was a transfer of aggression and she lost it like she was not willing to listen to anyone and at that crucial time the child needed the mother's attention which would have saved her from the things that eventually happened to her at the end of the movie but the mother was nowhere to be found why because she was also going through some issues and that one interfered with her child's upbringing so i want a, a family where my children can tell me whatever is wrong, going wrong with them not minding that, oh, what would mommy say uh, or what would daddy say? They are willing to open up their mind and tell me issues that they are confronted with, okay? And now, uh, beyond your child coming to you as a parent to seek for instruction or to seek for advice, you must have a listening ear. Don't be that kind of parent that every slightest opportunity like this wants to hear that your child has done so oh, you flare up or you start you know, being judgmental. It's not going to help you in any way. Trust me, they might come to you and say things that are, that, that are bizarre, okay? That doesn't mean that you should not be so quick to judge them and say, oh, why would you do that? Oh, you mean you stole a lie? Oh, you mean you did this? You're not going to have situations, though. He will rather scare of these children. I don't know that, yes, they might say things to you and you want to, like, react immediately, but you need the Holy Spirit to help you. Trust me, ma. Trust me, sir. You need the Holy Spirit to help you in raising your children. But most importantly, you must have a listening here. No matter how grievous, whatever they're about to tell you is, listen to them. Then ask the Holy Spirit to guide you on how to respond. Somebody told me a while ago, or a preacher said, that it is best to respond to situation rather than react. And the person really has sense by saying such. You respond to situations you do not react to. It. Do not allow your mess drag you far away from God. Because even in that mess, God still loves you and is willing to take you back. Now, am I saying that, yes, you should go and mess yourself up and know that, yes, my father is there to save me every time I mess up? No, that's not what I'm saying. But do you know the trick that the devil plays on this generation? When you fall or when you are going through a weakness in your life and you feel like, oh, I've gone too deep, that even if I approach the throne of grace, God is going to disown me and say, get it behind me, oh. I don't even know you. No, my dear. That's the lie of the devil. Do you know that in that's your state of weariness, that's your state of weakness, that's your state of inadequacy, God is waiting to hear from you. God is waiting for you to come and say, oh God, help me. I have tried so much to stop this habit, but it's so difficult to do. God is ever willing to help us. The devil makes us feel like, oh, whenever you do something so terrible, just don't go before God. No, just continue. God understands. No, that's the trick of the devil. You, you tell lies a lot, oh, you tell people things, and you have tried so much to stop it, and it's becoming so difficult. That is not the time to go away from God. That is not the time to say, uh, I'll just continue and pray that one day something will happen. My dear, in that your mess, hey, you still need God. God is always there to attend to you. God still loves you. Remember the story of the prodigal son, okay? When, he, you know, he squandered his means of livelihood and all that, and he squandered his inheritance, and he felt like, oh, what should I do now? After doing all sorts, eventually he said to himself, I'm going to rise and go to my father, even if you know not accept, I know that I'll sleep, I'm, I'm better off as a slave in my father's house. And when he was coming from afar, what did the Bible say? The Bible said the father ran to him. Hey, God, no, <clears throat> you will not understand the love of Christ, but when you come close to this God, you will know that God is ever loving. He ran towards him, embraced him and kissed him. That is to show you that, see, no matter how far you have gone in that mess, God is still willing to take you back. God is still willing to take you back. Today, I am sounding like a preacher. I don't know why, but I know that this message is for someone out there. Remember all the points that I said earlier on this video. And thank you so much for watching. If you actually did this things, one of these days, I am going to be coming with a series about, you know, things that has to do with kids' upbringing. 
know my experiences so far as a teacher and all that i'm going to be telling some of the things that goes wrong with kids if they are not properly tutored thanks see you again in my next video till then stay good and be safe bye